I'm the type of person that uh, once something causes me to like suffer behind it, right? Like mentally, emotionally, physically, I, I, I lock in to where I never want to feel like that again. Or if it's something that I can potentially suffer behind, next time around, I'm gonna be better prepared, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna let it impact me as much. And there's three things, man. Um, my finances early on, fitness, right? That's always Im like embedded in there, and then credentials. Right? It was situations that happened to where I said, man, I can't. Nah, this ain't gonna work. Finances was simple. I didn't care about no credit score like years ago, early on as a young, you know, sailor in the Navy. I used to, uh, <laughs> said before, I used to go, I don't know how I got locked up in it, but I used to get these cash advances and that just takes a chunk of your money out. So you, you go and they advance you the money. And then when you go to pay the money, you got to pay it back a certain amount of money out your check. And you just, you kind of caught in that cycle. So it was that. Um, I wanted nice things that I couldn't afford, so I would finance things. I financed rims for my car, I financed game councils, and there was never any thought about years down the line, like buying a home. I, nah, it wasn't even in my head, man. When it came to like credit cards and stuff that I owed on, them people ain't about to get their money. <laughs> And just the idea of owning a home down the line, nah, I'm good. I'll make it work. And it was a real fast and loose lifestyle until you, you know, I started growing up and I realized that I wanted more things. Like it was a point, my credit score was so low that I had to, I would go try to get an apartment and I'm sitting there, man, they run this application. Please don't tell me I need a close <laughs> for an apartment, man, or buying a car. I had to change that, man, to where, you grow up and you realize that you want better things for yourself, man. And unfortunately, there's so much of that going on, but because we we want to present a different, you know, version of ourselves to other people, some people still aren't fixing those things. And I'm here to tell you, you're going to want to start trying to fix those things. I was one of them cats that had like a, uh, we went to this place called First Choice Fuki. <laughs> it was on miles of cars, man. And I had... One of those dreaded stories of that high interest rate for a car that wasn't worth it. Yeah, it was wild. And it took me going on deployment to pay, to have enough money to be able to trade that car in. And it's a whole thing, man. So if you're a young service member, man, stay away from the place. <laughs> so with my finances, I had suffered enough to where I said, nah, I'm, mm -mm. and then just started learning, man. Um, they offered those free like financial literacy classes on base. I would ask people, right? I just started becoming more aware of how to fix my credit to where ultimately I was able to purchase my first home in 2017 and things like that. But yeah, credit is big. You know, let nobody tell you different. Fitness, like I've been working out since about 2000, I would say, and it, you know, I really started locking in over the years to where I was a, a a daily gym goer. Now, there's not too much that can really, you know, cause you to suffer behind your fitness. Yeah, there's like on the ship, when you're on the, in the military, you know, a lot of these ships don't have gyms like that. But I was always on amphibs, amphib amphibious ships and carriers to where they had gyms, right? So, yeah, the break in between or, you know, whatever the ship schedule is, that can kind of put... Your, your routine and some type of flux, but now nah, you're still able to get it. COVID though, oh yeah, you you suffer during COVID. The frequent gym gore during COVID, it was wild, man. It was the wild wild west out here. Because <laughs> for one, uh, gym gores, we was talking. Man, are they are they open? I heard that they close it, and you know they said the last ditch effort was. I had a membership to Anytime Fitness, and that's when police was driving around making sure that establishments weren't open, and Anytime Fitness had like a curtain over the window, and we looking like, it was illegal, it seemed like, <laughs> to be working out, and yeah, that for, for a gym gore to use that as therapy, to keep you calm, solve a lot of problems, like just to 
keep you, your, yourself in check. You got somewhere you can go every day for that to be taken away. And then how casual some people are. Well, well, well they heard they closing the gymnasiums. Anybody that called it gymnasium don't really work out like that, man. So when people would talk about it, it was just like, it was crazy. So that was the driving force behind this. It's COVID. Before 2020, I wasn't hearing working out at home. I I learned in 2020 that I I was, my, my workouts in my living room and on my patio, I was more focused than being in the gym. Like some people have to go to the gym because the atmosphere, the camaraderie, right? You just surround all that. I realized in 2020, nah, I'm good. I record my workout, so, cause people will ask me what I do. So it's for that, but I can get in my own space in my own head and be locked in. But when that was taken away, I suffered enough to where I said, man, I'm gonna go to Dick's Sporting Goods, I'm gonna get some bands. And I just, you know, some of the stuff I have in here now is from 2020. What's funny though, <laughs> like I get caught all these different, like, man, you be strong enough, you be, y'all be doing that. And I'll tell you why, man. Once COVID hit and just the whiff of gyms are closing, I had people I hadn't spoken to in years. Uh, Facebook Messenger, Instagram DM, text messages of people that have my number. We'll be like, man, gym's about to close. What you about to do now? Ha, ha, ha. Just like it was funny, man. Like, because they didn't live that life. They didn't do it. So when they would say it, they thought it would be a joke. And then I start you know, gathering more equipment. Then it went from what you gonna do now to where you see me working out in the living room. Man, you buying all the stuff where you get that from. Now you're mad because I got a home gym. Boy, how times have changed. This is my, uh, my health. <laughs> I invest in that, man. And the thing about like, you know, having a gym membership is I work out seven days a week. I would, you know, Monday through Friday, lift and cardio, Saturday, Sunday, you know, I would still go to the gym and get on the treadmill, do a long run. So when that was taken away, it's like, what's going on? And then thing is like 24 hour fitness wasn't always open. You would roll up in there on a Wednesday or a Friday morning, it would be closed because it was like a staffing situation they would have. So I would have any time fitness as a backup and for holidays, right? Like I like to work out Christmas morning before the family wake up. 24 hours ain't open, right? And then I would go to Anytime Fitness, but Anytime Fitness was $50 a month. So I'm paying $50 a month to have that as a backup gym. You know, it wasn't adding up. So now I have this and I made sure that I would create a space to where I would never need to go to a gym. Because even when I had like my little um, living room set up, I still would be missing components of like leg day and equipment that I use. So I said, man, if I ever get the opportunity, I'm going to have everything that I have, I want here so I can do my different type of training that I always used to do. And that's still, I guess people don't understand that because I posted, I post a lot about my home gym. I'm proud of this, but I posted, yeah, I canceled my gym membership and some dude I don't know was like, why would you cancel gym memberships? Because I have everything here in my gym. So yeah, my finances, my fitness, I you know, I suffered so much in my finances that I had to change it or I would not be where I'm at now. <laughs> fitness, it was almost taken away, right? To where it caused me to level up and have an alternate by not having access to a gym to where now I'm good. I talk a lot about credentials and education and the military covered most of that. And people will ask me, why are they talking about degrees? It's my job, man. I work in that day. <laughs> like, just don't look at the posts. I, I work in higher ed on the military side. And, you know, my first job was higher ed. And we had military student. It's free. <laughs> Navy cool. Different things that the military offers. It's free. So if that's not your thing, don't do it. But quit asking me why I'm always talking about degrees if I work in that area. Right? Like that's what you do when you work out of college is you influence the students to get to where you at educational wise. What is wrong with y'all? <laughs> but I suffered enough to where I said, I'm never gonna let these folks, meaning the military, I don't even say these folks, but yeah, man. Um, the goal for some of us, I'm not gonna say all, oh, you never know. Like my first enlistment, I kept saying, I was like, you would hear me say, I'm getting out every day you know, for the whole four years. Was I doing that? No, but it sounded cool. 
it sounded cool to let others think that you didn't have to rely on the military. And then that's why you, you know, you people will call you a lifer. Man, you a lifer. I'm about to get out and go to college. And one dude used to call me a lifer, man. He worked at the car wash up the street. No, not has anything to do with such and such. I'm just saying you never know how life will end up for you. So you got to be able to explore different opportunities and create options for yourself. But that was it. I never knew. And I never had no control. And I didn't have, like, you know, when I was in early on, you had people that would say, man, I'm going to get out. I'm going to go home, stay home, go to college. I really had an option like that. Like, and I wasn't going back to sleeping on the couch. So I wanted, I stayed in, you know what I'm saying? And then once I started establishing myself in the military, my biggest mistake was I kept all my eggs in the military basket. And I'm not saying nothing is wrong with that. You want to be all in, right? You, you know, but it ain't forever and it ain't guaranteed. You don't know how long you're going to be in there. And I know that's something a lot of people don't want to hear, but something medical can happen. It can get to the point to where like what happened to me. They're, they're, they're getting rid of people to get numbers now. So you got to be ready for that. 2011, they had the ERB, Enlisted Review Board. They were E6 and below. They were getting rid of a, a certain amount of sailors and the overman rating. I quote over man because ours was always over man, but I don't even know why I quoted it. <laughs> but what was crazy about it was when this happened, I was in E6. So on paper, I could have retired, right? You make it to that point, you feel like you can just let your hair down, even though I'm bald. So I can let my eyebrows down and be like, man, if I can make it to 2018, I'll at least get a retirement check from the Navy. Mm -mm. They, they, wasn't, they wasn't letting me think like that. It was too early to think like that. <laughs> so before that, I had one scare. It was called PTS, Perform to Serve, and I made it through that and then came to work and they said, hey, you're on the ERB list. And it scared the crap out of me. What am I gonna do? My eggs are all in the Navy's basket. I'm an E6, I just need to make it to retirement. What am I gonna do if I gotta get out, right? I didn't have any education. I didn't have no certifications, none of that. Not to say it's required, but I was looking at jobs, right? Cause I was, you know, I had a meeting with a mentor about it. And she was like, just go look at jobs and see if you qualify. And the job requirement said that I was required to have a bachelor's. Not what social media say and all these supposed experts and gurus and people doing petitions. The job requirement says it, right? The job, <laughs> the organization will say it's required, preferred plus. Not the Facebook group, the job. And I didn't have it. So I was able to eventually stay in. And that's when I, you know, I really just kind of locked into school. And I said, man, hey, I'm never going to let them get me like that again. And I'm glad I had that mindset because 2014, you know, something that was beyond my control, it was an investigation that happened in my, my division, something my leadership did. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, this might happen. We're going through the judicial process or adjudication. And, you know, now it sucked because I was four years from retirement, but credential wise, I felt a little better. So if they're going to do what they got to do and I ain't had no control and I had nothing to do with this, cool. I just started my master's, had knocked out a couple of certs. I at least felt okay, you know, confidence wise. So I didn't suffer as bad mentally, emotionally. And then ultimately, you know, we made it through that. And then I just turned it up more. I started doing more. Now, let me... Let me get another master's, man. Let me, you know, let me get this cert. This, these jobs are saying preferred plus. I know what the requirements are, but credential wise, I'm gonna get them preferred plus. That way, if next week somebody trying to bounce me, I'll be ready. 